Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we have an amazing guest, Chef Micah. We are at his raw food restaurant in Hawaii and this is some of the raw, best raw food I have ever had in my entire life. What I love about this food is it's not too heavy. It's still so light, makes you feel so good. So we had to bring him on the channel. He's an incredible man, a man that knows so many things about raw foods. So I'll let you introduce yourself too. I know you're a celebrity chef, I think, a filmmaker. Anything else we should let them know first? Uh, I mean, there's, there's, yeah, ironically, there's a list. Um, I'm the founder of a neuromuscular system called NMRT, Neuromuscular Release Therapy. It's uh, a deep structural system in, in the same genre as Rolfing, um, but we reset the nervous system in the wow. body. And the intelligence of your body as a supercomputer is in the nervous system. That's like the mainframe of the wiring. So we use a controlled series of bioelectric releases, like when you hit your funny bone. Yeah. But you usually hit your funny bone and you hit it by accident and you hit it hard and it hurts. Well, we do a controlled release and that electricity moves the chemical memory that's been sitting dormant in the cells and it flushes memory and it fl flushes trauma out of the body. Oh, I want to do this. Yeah. So, um, that was kind of the Trinity for me of health and wellness is, is physical touch and body work and healing and then the food mm -hmm. and, and teaching and really education, knowledge and wisdom. So those are the, those are the kind of the trinities that I've invested my energy and time into for companies. Yeah. Cool. So the big thing was there's no living foods here on the Island. There's no companies that are doing that. And, um, my origin story as a chef was I was trained in gourmet kitchens and was blessed to have some amazing apprenticeships uh, in five-star restaurants. And then I became vegan and then I became a living food practitioner and I got blessed to be around some amazing living food chefs in Los Angeles. And, uh, what I noticed was a lot of the living food chefs, mm -hmm. um, became vegan living food practitioners, self practitioners. Yeah. And then they learned to make food. And mm -hmm. so that was kind of my niche was, I'm actually trained in gourmet cuisine and I just had to adapt over to living food technology. Yeah. And that was learning kind of funky, cool things like you can use psyllium husk as a binding agent or the way we make pie crusts is with dates and shredded coconut that's pulverized and nuts. And we can make it into this doughy substance that when we refrigerate it, it gets hard like real cookie dough or like real pie dough. And so there was some unique adaptations that were fun creatively. They were a challenge for me. Um, and then my other obsession was like, I, like most people are lactose intolerant. Mm. So things like ice cream and cheesecakes and whipped cream. I love these things, but they, you know, did just mad damage on my digestive tract. So I was like, how can I replicate these things with something else? Because cheese is a concept. Milk is a concept. Uh, whipped cream is a concept. Mm -hmm. And so I saw you could make these things from, from other things. Yeah. Um, so then I got kind of obsessed with how can I, you know, I tried people's cheesecakes, different vegan chefs, living food chefs, cheesecakes. And you know, this book here was, was a 20 year journey for me because all of my recipes were based around cashews. And I made some amazing stuff. My cream cheese made from cashews is well, one of my proudest recipes. But then I learned that cashews actually aren't a raw nut. They're actually not raw at all. That's so what I've have, heard, yeah. We have a whole industry for living foods that's based around a nut that's, not only is it not raw, it's completely toxic when it's raw. You can die from eating it. So they have to pasteurize it. So when you go to the store and you have what they say is raw cashews, it's actually just pasteurized cashews that are less pasteurized than completely roasted cashews. But that means they also have more neurotoxins in them because they pasteurize it to get the neurotoxins out. So. It just was like an absurdity to me that, wait a sec, if you want to do living foods, you should have foods that are actually raw. And I just saw so many living food chefs and restaurants basing so much of their menu that they bragged about. Look how creamy we can make these sauces. Yeah. Look how Everywhere creamy still we can... it's like that a lot now, right? And I would eat the food and I would be like, oh, this is delicious. And then I would be having indigestion you know, like 20, 30 minutes later and yeah. just being crazy gaseous. And it was like, why? Because cashews are not digestible. They're actually extremely indigestible and they're like the lesser evil of just eating dairy. So we're blessed here with a resource of coconut. And so I, 
I took the extra time and I rewrote all of my recipes to have coconut as the base for the cream instead of cashews. Whoa, that would have been a lot of work too. It was. And I, I still put in the recipes that you can use cashews because obviously everyone doesn't have access to the you coconut. know coconut. And we're blessed on this island. We have a spectrum of coconut species here. We have actually like over 10 different genuses of coconut here mm -hmm. and some of them are very androgynous um they don't taste like coconut they taste like a very neutral meat base and so they cream and puree into like the most neutral of creams as you tried with the whipped cream from the apple pie it's just yeah. like no you couldn't tell that was there was no, coconut that was, in there unless, your desserts yeah. were out of this world and like mm. i said like your food isn't heavy i still feel fantastic after whereas yes. with the water raw food i'm like not like the same as cooked food effects, but yeah. you feel it. You and do. I guess it is like the cashews and all that stuff too, right? And oils too, a lot of times. People are still really heavy on the polyunsaturated fatty acids. So do you any oils or no? Minimal oils. Like if we ever do use oil, it would be like a little toasted sesame oil mm -hmm. on the most minuscule amount for the aspect of flavor, but not as like a conduit for the dish. And even for myself, as I did like a, a, a an oil detox, um, I saw how much oils were integrated into everything. I mean, like yeah. as chefs, we're trained to use oil so much. And so when I would even go out to restaurants, I would try to describe to people, we want this, but we don't want the oils in it. And it was just like, they didn't really know how to do that. It was such yeah. a codependency. And the thing is with oils is that, you know, if you were to have a tablespoon of, let's say sesame oil on your salad, you know, it probably took 5,000 sesame seeds to make that tablespoon True. of oil. That's so a good point. when you take that tablespoon of oil, it goes in your system and your body's like, did we just eat 5,000 sesame seeds? And it's trying to equate where's the shell, where's the husk, where's the meat of the seed, because it's gauging the oil per increment off each little tiny yeah. sesame seed. So how so, that affects our body, right? So it gets dumped in the gallbladder and the gallbladder is the gallbladder primarily is for fighting infection and producing bile. Yeah. And so when you do a, a, a gallbladder detox, one of the big things is you have to remove oil. So wow, coconut so maybe, oil, raw coconut oil is a saturated fat. So we're kind of good on that. So maybe we should watch if we're raw, we're raw and we're still incorporating like a lot of oil, oil in our lifestyle. Eh? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, raw coconut oil is okay. And, and olive oil, if you can get access to it, within like three weeks of it being pressed is mm. is still okay because it's considered it's still alive yeah past there it switches to a rancidity yeah and then it, it, it's compromised so any if you can find an olive oil that has to be put in the fridge that's a good sign yeah so what's the difference between you know the live food the living food on yeah. the body yeah. what if somebody says well chef micah why not just have an italian restaurant like what's the difference we may as well just go enjoy some real pasta like what's the difference for you oh i mean you know the big thing is obviously the enzymatic uh, integrity. So our our body expects that about 80% of our enzymes are supposed to come from our food. So when we have this dead food that we're eating, our pancreas, which is the primary house for all of our enzymes, mm -hmm. has to deliberate all of these enzymes just to break our food down. And it's, you know, it's conflicting because if you're eating food for energy, mm -hmm. but your pancreas has to deliberate all of these enzymes to just break the food down that's actually supposed to be giving you energy instead of those enzymes actually doing other things in your body, which they would if you had food that was enzyme enriched. That's like, that's the biggest thing for me is that, you know, one of my teachers said, you eat life, you add to the life of the body, you eat death, you add to the death of the body. So if you're eating things that are dead, and that could be anything, vegetables, when you cook vegetables, you're cooking the life out of them. It doesn't mean that you can't um, sear them if, the, if you're into cooking food. It just means that when, you know, all these Indian foods, because I've been, you know, a yogic practitioner, you know, I was raised in the Eastern sciences. And so I noticed that the yogic sciences are so powerful, but then I would see what they were serving was these just crazy overcooked Indian dishes with just like, I mean, they're so cooked, so yeah. cooked and so oily. And sadly, as I saw a lot of the yogis that were in lineages that I trained in, they had big bellies. They were like overweight. They, they, you know, passed away in their fifties and sixties. Yeah. And it's like the proof is in the pudding. Where is your health and wellness at and your longevity? And again, you can't get past the aspect of eating life for the body. So anything, even people that eat meat, if you're going to eat meat, you shouldn't cook it. You should eat it as raw. raw and live as possible because anything you cook, 
vegetables or animal proteins, you cook it, you kill it. Yeah, even Luke Corona says that. Do you know him? I, I yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, I'm close friends with him. He's 73, and he says, like, if you're going to eat meat, if he, as he said, if I'd ever yep. eat meat, I'd eat it raw. Yep. Yeah. In fact, our, um, our, uh, the the organ that we have that people get removed that's looked at as an expendable thing um used to be a different organ in our bodies um why am i i'm spacing on yes your appendix, your appendix yeah. yeah your appendix actually used to be a house with adopt adaptogenic probiotics in you so if you ate a poison plant it would actually read that and it would adapt and it would produce epigenetic regeneration aspects to the body where so if you eat a poison plant and the toxins go in they damage the epigenetic mm -hmm. infrastructure of your dna mm -hmm. so through history we had this protective organ that used to actually regenerate the epigenome if we were introduced to toxic things wow so but they they mark that the decline in our digestion came with the introduction of fire and cooking these meats because before we cooked meat over an mm -hmm. open flame they were dehydrating it they were eating it fresh they were eating it raw yeah and so they've marked the digestive decline in the destruction of this organ that's now become our appendix which we consider to be expendable marked with open flame and the concept of the technology of cooking things over an open flame mm -hmm. because as we ate these meats that were dead and charred and cooked it actually damaged the digestive tract in humanity through history and it's kind of you know now it's of course been enabled and fueled by the industrialization of food where yeah we just everything is processed now like it's every control, it's right? it's amazing and our microbiome our guttural integrity has been under attack for a really long time so yeah so eating things with more enzymes is naturally going to support the replenishment of the microbiome and obviously i'm a big proponent of i'm a big supporter of probiotics yeah probiotics are amazing so that's and a that's a Big one. And what are some different ways people can get their probiotics in? Um, I mean, obviously, cult learning to culture your own yogurts is the most powerful. I've I've developed a, a creature. It's like a pet of mine over the last eight years. That's that's helped so many of my patients and now friends and family. Uh, that it's at that stage where we want to build it into it, it's it's kind of like Bronner's soap he made it for his family and then everyone started using yeah. it and eventually it was like okay we gotta we have to get this out to the world we have an obligation yeah. to get this product out to the world so yeah. so in that regard we're at that stage where we have a hundred thousand coconuts that go to waste here on Kauai every month no way yeah, it's what? Like that's a crazy huge these coconuts natural... are fantastic these are the best coconuts I've ever had in my life so when I heard that I was like wow this is just amazing I've lived here 17 years years that nobody has utilized this natural resource there are coconut processing facilities on every other island you know we need to build one of these and not just to produce our yogurt and our kefirs but we take the husk and the husk is one of the number one fertilizers mm -hmm. for the gardening industry and even the cannabis industry so and then the the, the shell itself we burn down into carbon that can be used for industrial based technology That's so incredible. we make we we generate all kinds of things off this beautiful natural resource but the 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 yogurt itself i started with a 52 strain master culture and two of the two of the strains of probiotic that we have uh, one of them is lacto lactobacillus rainier which is actually the same probiotic that's in human breast milk so no way when you're breastfeeding yeah the, um, these probiotics actually release uh from the from a woman's body into her breast milk and that's what builds your immune system from mm -hmm. breastfeeding and so yeah. the same lactobacillus is in sourdough bread which is another example of like if you're going to eat these things mm. sourdough bread has this lactobacillus strain in it and it's also what's called a slow burning carbohydrate which is what you want it's a holistic food wow fast burning carbs boost the glycemic levels and they throw your whole system off yeah and every every form of bread was really sourdough based with the industrialization of food they wanted to find a way to produce more bread to capitalize on the mm -hmm. volume to ship out and so they started adding external yeasts and this is where we all kind of got cheated and our guts got cheated and the sad thing is mm -hmm. if your grandparents and your parents ate these foods they damage your epigenetic infrastructure, and so that's where Crazy. we end up getting things like gluten allergies. Yeah, which none I used of that stuff have. existed. I had before. that before I went yeah. raw. Yeah, that stuff didn't exist before. Things didn't. have gotten crazy. And like, what else in this day and age, like, do you think is toxic? I know, like, the cashews. Anything else you think like we should avoid? That any 
other toxic things out there? I mean, obviously, I'm going to touch base on the radionics fields because our technology devices and the radionics fields that are around them are... Like our phones and yes, stuff, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. So a radionics field is, is a field that's around any electromagnetic device that you have. And, you know, we're so desensitized to them. We're so desensitized to the technology. And, and, and just even staring at the screen in the blue light has shown uh, deterioration for eyesight you we have a generation of kids that are getting uh, nearsighted now because they're staring at these phones so do you avoid it like you don't use it I, too much or? i try my best to i yeah. i try to give my children the all of the knowledge and wisdom but it's so they're so it's so integrated i know the concept of it is so yeah. integrated the the methodical aspect of how they'll check it and they'll look at it and of course then you have the dopamine serotonin flux that happens when you look at your phone anytime you look at your phone you get a release of dopamine we used to have to earn our dopamine we would have to like accomplish something or mm -hmm. like go climb a tree or like perform like a chore or something and we would get that dopamine release now literally you just have to do this and you get these spurts of dopamine so what i've seen from the youth is this kind of comatose codependency on dopamine and a real lack of motivation and it, it's it's just it's really disturbing to bear witness to true if you say it like a, that yeah on a biochemical level um you know unfortunately the environment and this world is just getting you know uh progressively more toxic Mm -hmm. And so it's very hard to actually um, to really know what you're eating is actually, you know, not compromised. I saw a woman who went through Whole Foods recently and was just looking on each label. And it said, after all the things, it says bioengineered food product. At the, I saw at the, that. My mom sent me a reel, yes, a couple of reels like that. I was yeah, like, what, what like, does this even mean? I was like, things are just getting crazy. Yep. I yeah. mean, I would say Erewhon's probably one of the ones that's still with some integrity. Yeah. But they're, again, they're pretty small. They're not to they the caliber are, yeah. that Whole Foods is. So Whole Foods is rolling out this bioengineered food weird, product. weird, right? And they just slide it in on the, at the end of the label yeah, on the, one weird. of the last ingredients. Yeah. Yeah. So it is really hard to, it really is about source at this point. Like you need to know the source of where your food comes from. And yeah. we, we used to have to because we had to be accountable to grow our own stuff. Mm -hmm. True. It was, it was our codependency with the industrialization of food. We bought hook, line, and sinker this whole thing of giving them control mm -hmm. of what our food is mm -hmm. out of convenience. You yeah, know? it's true it's it's uh it's a scary thing in that regard we're blessed here we have some of the purest land and air and water still on the planet yeah in Hawaii, Hawaii here this is some of the best air I've ever breathed yeah. I noticed that some of the probably the best air I've ever breathed the best food I've ever seen like this is one from of the, the most, moment you get off the plane right yeah I mean you just it notice feels it. like heaven it's it weird. feels like this is how it was intended to be yeah so you must notice a big difference on your health being here Huge. Like I used to travel because I had a practice in Los Angeles uh, where I would see patients and I would be there for like, you know, anywhere from seven to 10 days a month. And every time I got off the plane back here, it was mm -hmm. just kind of creepy. It was like <laughs> right? there was like moisture and the air was sweet and like there was just a cleanliness. And, you know, we see because I have patients that come out to work with me from all over the world. And when they get here, sometimes they'll have a detox mm -hmm. from where they're at. Yeah. And it'll be like three or four days. Their body's like detoxing because it's scary. Like their system instantly is now in a pure environment. And up until that point, Nothing would detox because it's continually being put back in from mm -hmm. the environment around True. you. But you go into a pure environment and it's your body wants to get rid of it. It True. wants to dump it out. You yeah. know, it's really weird. That it's, is so true. It's 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 really scary, primarily because we are oblivious for the most part in our day to day lives of what we're getting bombarded with, mm. you know, so uh, the food really. And I'd say like the the mentality that we eat food for taste and not substance that's that's another one that i was like okay if we can make this food taste really good if we can make a lasagna if we can make a burger if we can make nachos and yeah. you the flavor is there yeah but then the substance is there so right? after you eat it you feel good yeah from you it. i feel like your food is just so satisfying on a soul level but then you feel good because that's the key right we want to feel is. our best any tips for people watching how to make better food how to make better tasting living food 
food. Really dive into the awareness that taste is something that you experience for a matter of seconds. I mean, if you're chewing a long time, what are you going to chew for 15 seconds, maybe 20 seconds? Most people are eating within three to five seconds. They're consuming their food. They're getting the taste. They're having the enjoyment from it. But now it's in you mm -hmm. for the next however long, depending on how like toxic the food is or how congestive or undigestible the food is, um, now it's stuck in you. And the experience of processing it is not that it goes in one end and out the other. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, food gets distributed in your fat cells, the toxins do, and it's in you. So really weighing out substance over taste. Obviously, like, you know, like our walnut carne, we make to taste like real, you know, nut like beef crumble. And, you know, if you just had beef, ground beef and you didn't flavor it, it's just going to taste bland. The reason it tastes mm -hmm. good is the cumin and the smoked paprika yeah. and the coriander and the chili powder. Those are the reasons that people enjoy that. And so what we saw was it really is about herbs and spices and flavor. And so with this book, you know, I when I was getting into the living foods as a chef, a lot of these books I was looking at as a chef and I was playing with recipes. And, um, you know, it's a lot to buy food, to follow a recipe, mm -hmm. to put all this energy in and then the recipe doesn't taste turn out. True. Yeah, that's very defeating, especially if you're trying something new. So uh, I noticed a lot of these books as a chef, I would I would try to make the recipe off their measurements and it would turn out whack and I've had their food before. Mm -hmm. And so then I would modify their recipes by like a quarter of a cup or half a cup and I would get it to turn out how they served it in the restaurant. Yeah. And I was like, huh. did they purposefully alter their recipes yeah. so it wouldn't turn out as good yeah. in the restaurant as it was in their cookbook? I could see the marketing play on it, but <laughs> wow. morally and ethically, it just yeah. seems really messed up because yeah. it's already a lot to try to learn to make a new, you know, so that was actually really frustrating for me. I wasted a lot of food trying to make these recipes and I ended up, I ended up seeing several of them I had to modify to get it to turn out like I had tasted in the restaurant. So my intention was I want to make a cookbook that the recipes are precise, mm -hmm. that when you, that, that when you follow the recipe, it turns out. And, and it's inspiring and it's exciting for you. Um, I noticed that other cookbooks didn't really have a reference book for a lot of the things as we get into living foods. Superfoods is a big chapter. Mm. Uh, tonic alchemy to me is a big chapter that came up in living foods. Wow. Herbs and spices, learning how to work with them were a big chapter. So none of the books that I was following had any in-depth education for that. And so in this book, it's technically five books. There's an urban spice guide in this. And the urban spice guide is, is a culinary urban spice guide that shows both the medicinal and the culinary properties of the herbs, which is really cool. I've never seen that done before no. where you could look at cinnamon and you could see the flavor profiles and what it mixes That's with. Cool. Then you can also see that it helps with inflammation and digestion and, and gout. And you're like, whoa. Yeah. So just that was, it seems really invaluable to put an urban spice guide that had both the culinary and medicinal attributes to all herbs A to Z. Cool. And then we put a superfood dictionary in, which yeah. felt like something significant because when you're in the living foods industry and you are exploring your journey, you start playing with new things and exploring superfoods and maybe yeah. super fruits. Yeah. And so we wanted to put something in that gave, you know, sometimes a, a, a general history for where this came from, yeah. what indigenous people maybe discovered this. True. And then it's healing attributes to it. And so, wow. and then of course, uh, the art of, of time tonics and tonic alchemy was a big passion and love of mine and learning how to incorporate dandelion and burdock and, and chicory and how to replicate maybe coffee made from roots yeah. that has a rootsy flavor but so doesn't cool. have the caffeine. So we put a tonic alchemy manual in there and then a gourmet instructional living cookbook. So, wow, yeah. I love that. Yeah. And okay, so what have Raw Living Foods done for you personally? Have you experienced any positive changes or benefits as a 100%. result of, yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, there's there's some really powerful medical cases out there for people that have been extremely sick or had things like fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. and, and all of that was based off inflammation from a very toxic diet. And so as they, as they removed those inflammatory things and they purified their diet, 
a lot of those things went away, mm -hmm. whether it be and things that the doctors had no real solution for them I know. on. And then they they went to the food, the food as a medicine, and they started to eat more life and their system reset. So mm -hmm. for myself, I really, you know, I was indoctrinated and raised in things like mcdonald's and all the stuff that a lot of us were yeah um and i would say i i really came to the path of being vegan and then getting into living foods around like 18 19. wow so and and it was kind of a i feel like kind of ahead of the curve of when it yeah. really started to go yeah and, and primarily I came to that path because of uh, my teachers. My first yogi, he wouldn't really have me call him a guru. Um, he's not into that, that aspect, but he was like my father, but he was also a PhD in biochemical nutritionist. Mm -hmm. So I was learning biochemical nutrition uh, from the vegan side and then mm -hmm. transitioned into the living food side. And uh, I would say I had a really powerful, you know, multi-layered detoxification of the first probably 18 years of my life, accumulating a lot of the stuff, yellow five, red six, all of these things that we were eating, not understanding that, you know, with the industrialization of food came some really toxic things. They were throwing in as preservatives. They were throwing, throwing mm -hmm. in it for a presentation mm -hmm. to make it look bright and red yeah. or green or blue. Yeah. And um, we just, we kind of trusted, we trusted this system we trusted we did, what they yeah. were doing now they're about to outlaw one of those i don't know if it's red 2 or red 40 but they're literally about to the fda is about to remove it from God. the edible like color food colorings for you know and that's crazy because it's been in our food system for decades that they've been serving that it's out crazy. you know in fact i saw a couple that said remove the red 40 and the red 2 from your children's diet and it's amazing what it's in from doritos do you name it and they said that their children's behavior changed so dramatically from removing the red dyes in like a week they were blown away about i how believe their it it's it's amazing because you know you are biochemical so your perception of reality is biochemical which means the biochemical nutrition that you take in affects literally your perception of reality exactly we, we see food as like something we eat for emotional comfort um, and that was another thing that one of my teachers the same one the biochemical nutritionist that was like my first mentor as I was transitioning into the living foods thing, I had the chefs that were the living foods and showing me some of the tricks of the trade. And then I had this very puritanical uh, yogic practitioner mentor who was going to the, like, the most core puritanical base of living foods, like, like a, a, a teaspoon of chickpea miso and soaking red lentils for like 10 minutes and they'd start sprouting almost instantly. And he would heat up the miso with some kombu and just throw the red lentils in mm -hmm. and maybe some shredded carrots and stir it around warm, not over like 120 de degrees and mm -hmm. serve us this little bowl of like red lentil chickpea miso soup. And it was, it was after like two hours of Kundalini practices. Mm -hmm. And it was just like we were eating for base nourishment after going through these intensive activating physical practices and so it was very it was very practical our application for food and it had a purity to it where it, it was still yummy but it it the substance behind it fueled us for the next two or three hours yeah, to exactly. learn mantras and do more practices and I, I loved there was a, a very nostalgic purity to that that I I've tried to incorporate with the gourmet and tried to merge the world mm. so but you know my my grandparents uh, come from Italy and my uh, my lasagna recipe is traditional to the Italian recipe that mm -hmm. my grandma would make we're just using zucchini noodles instead of gluten lasagna noodles yeah exactly and we're making our cheese we're making a ricotta from coconut and we're marinating our mushrooms over 48 hours instead of cooking them mm -hmm. and we're using fresh basil so it's been amazing to see even the shelf life of some of the living foods that we have it's been really profound to yeah. bear witness to and you really see once it goes past that place of cooking um the deterioration for it uh is just rapid it's mm -hmm. accelerated yeah and, and I, I would i would sometimes chef events where they would ask me to do both live dishes and cooked dishes. And I yeah. remember one time they had me do a cooked lasagna and they had me do the raw lasagna and they had me serve them together on the plate for this women's retreat. And all of them just ate the, the raw lasagna no because side by side, the flavors of this fresh marinara yeah. as opposed to a cooked one, it just, 
And it energizes you, right? And, and it the nourishes you. Food, it doesn't yeah. hurt you or destroy you. Yeah, so we your... had a bunch of cooked lasagnas left on the plate. No and way. everyone ate the live ones. And we were kind of like, okay, note to self, uh, probably don't serve the living foods alongside the cooked foods. It just... There's no comparison. You're drawn to something that has more life in it. Yeah, I love that. Flavor. And you, I yeah. feel like you know so much about health. If you had to pick like the three greatest lessons you've learned in health, what would you say? Um, that's a great question. I would say that your breath is one of the most powerful things that can activate your health and wellness. Um, I would say that your human body is designed to be touched. So all this tissue mm -hmm. is actually porous like a sponge. So everything that you feel and everything that you physically do, all your feelings and all your physical animation each day, chemically saturates in your tissue like a sponge. Mm. And we're actually supposed to just squeeze. Really? Sque squeeze and be squeezed. Squeeze and be squeezed to drain the you mean saturation. Like yeah. Like with other, like yeah, touch just, with other people. Just some yeah. palpation. Just really? Some, yeah. Yeah. And think about it. When we don't get that, our sponge continues to saturate and that saturation includes being picked on when you were six years old, mm -hmm. that car accident you had at 21. All mm. of those things are held in these residues that are in your sponge, your spongy porous tissue. And so what happens is because we were never supposed to hold this stuff, we were supposed to be releasing as we went. A really similar metaphor that's really good to understand is, okay, every day we have to brush our teeth, right? Mm -hmm. If we don't brush our teeth, we get this film that collects on our teeth and our gums that, that we could call tartar. Yeah. If we don't brush the tartar off, what happens? It hardens yeah, into plaque, plaque yeah. and that starts eating away the enamel of our teeth. Well, your body similarly on a daily cycle has an accumulation. Mm. It's not tartar, it's this neurochemical residue and this calcification that comes about and crystallization of protein from you tearing your muscles every day. Wow. And then every time you feel something, you have neuropeptides that release that make you feel happy, make you feel sad. So yeah. you're supposed to be brushing the body like you're brushing your teeth and nobody taught us that. We didn't get the memo. And so what happens, we accumulate all of the versions of ourself are sitting in our chemical memory. Wow. They affect how we listen, how we learn, how we love. And so when we flush those, it makes us lighter and freer. And we become a, a liberated present version of ourself and not a byproduct of all the versions of ourself that are still mm. mucking around in us. And you see it with adults where you see a 60 year old uh, adult male who's owns a company with 50 employees and makes six figures mm -hmm. and he's having a tantrum in traffic because someone cut him off. That's the act of a child. Mm -hmm. But he hasn't reprogrammed himself from this, as one of my teachers used to say, we're listening to ourselves as babies. We're all like babies in adult bodies because mm -hmm. no one taught us we have to release these these premature versions of ourself that are in our chemistry. So I would say that would be number two is how important touch is for healing yourself. Mm -hmm. And then I would say the third one is eating life adds to the life of your body and you eat death, you add to the death. Mm -hmm. Very simple principles for health and wellness. It's about the breath, it's about the healing touch, and it's about eating things that nourish your body, that support your pancreas and your enzymatic infrastructure and don't deplete it. Mm, yeah. Don't take more energy to give you energy, mm -hmm. right? Because it doesn't make sense. Why would I, if you had to put fuel in your car and it actually stressed your engine to get your engine to drive forward, it would be like, it would be like putting diesel in, in a traditional engine. So, yeah. and, and that's the thing is that right now, especially with our world being toxic, with the radionics fields, uh, with us mentally and psychologically being under attack in so many ways and so bombarded with fear, uh, it's up to us to do everything we can mm -hmm. to to rise against that. Yeah, it and is. And to be as healthy as we can. And, and that lies on you. That is, a, you know, you are in charge of that. This is about your personal accountability in, in doing things to actually empower, activate, and heal yourself. You yeah. Know? And yeah. do you do any cleansing? Do you believe in like juice cleansing or fasting I, or any of that? Or no? I do. I Actually, I can adamantly speak for both dry fasting and water fasting. In fact, there's a reason why... In, in the Bible and in scripture, they removed the passages about fasting, which is really interesting. They did? Like, why would they wow, take yeah. that out? Yeah. Especially in Matthew, he talks specifically about it. And I'll tell you why. Because in order for you to see the magic of what happens when you fast, you have to do it. You can't describe it to people. Mm. And so as you get two and three days into fasting, I mean, if you think about it spiritually, if you choose to cut off the physical connection to things, to food, that naturally brings you closer to energy. 
Mm. So you cut out the physical, the anchor, the bondage of the physical, the things you're codependent upon, the things that you get enjoyment from. Oh, I love to, I personally love to have some kombucha in my evening. It's like one mm -hmm. of the things I look forward to. So when we're cutting these things out that physically bring us joy, it naturally brings us closer to spirit. It brings mm. us closer to energy and it, it just makes sense. Yeah. And, and that's why they would fast and they would have these powerful connections with the creator because they were getting closer to the creator by choosing to step away from the physical realm and all of yeah. the enticement of the physical. So water fasting is, is really powerful. Dry fasting, I would say, is the most powerful for getting rid of cancerous growths mm -hmm. if you're sick in any way. And primarily that's because, just so everybody knows, Every day, your body, your machine requires a certain regimen, depending on your weight, your size, your frame, your, your metabolic rate, your body requires vitamins, nutrients, amino acids, all mm -hmm. of these raw materials. And if you don't get it, your body, just so you know, is eating it off of itself. It's a really, really important thing to understand, especially if you're vegan, especially if you're cutting out some of these pivotal amino acids and that you get from animal products, you need to be getting the right things. Yeah, how do you think we can make sure we get those things? Well, the, the thing to realize is that your body doesn't care where it gets those nutrients from. Mm -hmm. Your mind does. It feels morally, ethically obligated to, I want to not eat, uh, eat animal proteins, I want to be vegetarian, these are the... Your body is a beautiful autonomous vessel it mm -hmm. it just knows it needs these things and if it doesn't get it from what you're putting in it's going to eat it off of your muscle muscle tissue it's going to eat it off of your fat and eventually it eats it off the brain yeah so it requires these things so so for me with mandala living foods i saw so many anemic and malnourished people who had the vegan diet yeah. i was like okay we need to create a chain of of living foods that if you're going to eat this way, this is the way to do it. If mm -hmm. you're going to eat nuts, you need to sprout them because they produce neurotoxins and you want to get those neurotoxins out because it's trying to defend itself. So it's not good for us to see like nuts by the handful just from the bag. No, right? think about it. Animals can defend themselves by running away from you. What are plants defense system? Mm -hmm. The plants defense system is pr to produce toxins neurotoxins and if you think about it a giraffe only eats one type of leaf mm -hmm. a koala eats one type of leaf nature is very orchestrated so that plants can survive that a different species develops an immunity to a specific lectin or neurotoxin that that plant produces mm -hmm. and then that's why that animal is the only one that eats that specific plant we as a species are the only species that eat a bunch of different stuff Everything else in nature is very True. regimented. Yeah. So uh, I, when I found out that 50 people die from potato poisoning a year, I was like, whoa, because not all of us have the ability to digest some of these things. I come from an Irish lineage along with Italian lineage and a Jewish lineage. So I do okay with potatoes, let's say, mm -hmm. but someone else doesn't do the same thing with all these different nightshades. Like mm -hmm. we, we all have things that a lot of times we don't realize are producing inflammation for us because we're not supposed to be eating that. It's yeah. called an agitator. And it's whatever chemicals or lectins or defense mechanisms that are in those vegetables that that's its way of defending itself so that everything doesn't just eat it. Mm -hmm. And it can, pro it can continue on its species. So the same with seeds and nuts. They produce a neurotoxin that's a defense system so that they can try to survive. Mm -hmm. And those almonds can make another almond tree. Mm -hmm. so so the way I look at it is if you can activate it, activate it past its stage of defense, right? It goes from defense mode to you sprout it and it thinks, I made it. Mm -hmm. I don't have to defend myself anymore. True. I can sprout a little tree yeah. and then you eat it. Now it's in the life-giving stage. It's yeah. past the defense stage. Mm -hmm. And that is why it is important to soak your nuts, to soak your legumes, to soak your seeds because you want to get it past that defense stage. You mm -hmm. want it to get it to the, the sprouting life stage because then you you're literally just you're eating the life and not the defense. Does that make sense? That, that, that makes seems like total really sense. And I interview so many people like Lou, so many people who say it's so crucial we soak them. And I yep. think that maybe is a reason why a lot of people are feeling like crap if they're yep. eating vegan or raw vegan because they're eating heavy nuts, high fat, and it's not soaked. So especially especially in regards to you know the sprouting aspect and eating of life, it's such a pivotal stage, and it is it takes a little more preparation. Mm -hmm. So. But if you soak your nuts and then you flavor them however you want, maybe with little herbs, 
and then you put them back in the dehydrator and dehydrate them again. Now you have that crunchy nut, but you've taken it through the stage where it's released all those neurotoxins, mm. it's released any of its defense mechanisms, and now you still get the crunchiness. You had to do an extra stage with it, but we put a calendar in this book to show people it, it, it really isn't hard to take an extra step in your food. That's why some of, you know, one of the first chapters is called the meditation of preparation that, mm. you know, preparation can be a meditation. It can be something that you enjoy. And if you're making raw tostadas, you're making our live tostadas, you make a big batch yeah. and you know that as you're getting down to three or four of them left, mm -hmm. you just need to time it so that you start the next batch and dehydrate them. So as you're down to that last one, yeah. you have a fresh batch coming out Yeah, and then you're, you're timing it with your schedule to always have the food that you want. Mm, exactly. It's easy to make uh, almond milk's one of the easiest things. You soak it for eight so hours, yeah. blend it, strain it. We take the nut pulps and we make cake with it. Nice. You can make Smart. cookies with it. Yeah. You can flavor it how you want. And I remember when we had the pandemic and everything shut down and they there was no milk for other people. Mm -hmm. You have packs of dry almonds that are raw. Yeah, exactly. You can have milk for months. Yeah. And what's your favorite raw food dish? I would say currently for us, I really love the nachos. I just, I, I am a big fan of nachos. So to replicate it in a really healthy way, mm -hmm. um, our coconut nacho cheese is, is fermented. It's full of probiotics. It's, you know, I, I used to love like so many people that nasty Velveeta cheese that be on yeah. the nachos yeah. in the movie theaters and the bowling alleys, <laughs> yeah, I get it. but I never felt good after I ate it. Yeah. And so I found a way to replicate that goopy cheese with coconut. And it it's it's delicious and it yeah. tastes just like it and it feels so much better when I eat it. It so does, yeah. I love the nachos. I'd say that's probably one of my favorite dishes right now. And I can always gauge because my kids are are tougher on the raw food. Yeah, it's not that they like you know they know what's in McDonald's. They know what's in a, a lot of this processed industrial food. But getting, you know, if there's a, a living foods dish we make that they they will eat, it's it's a successful dish for me. That's so great. And there's so I many of them. It's not a boring lifestyle. It's amazing. No. Yeah. yeah. And what's maybe, okay, you're a cool guy. So what's your favorite book and favorite quote? Ah, that's a good one. I would say um, right now my favorite book is is literally the Bible. I decided to read it for the first time front to back because... I couldn't speak on it because I've never really read mm -hmm. it fully. Yeah, me too. Um, hmm. And uh, there's, it's just, it's been profoundly powerful for me and has like changed my life. I read it and it actually, it changes you. Mm -hmm. I've never seen that with a book before. Um, but I would say definitely, uh, and God so loved the world that he sent his only son to to save this world. I would uh -huh. say that's probably one of my favorites. I love sure. that. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And anything else you want to share with my viewers? They're amazing. And lots of them are super health conscious and anything that just comes to mind and let everybody know where they can find you. hundred percent. And this book is amazing. So where can we get this book too? Is uh, it livingfoods.com. So www.livingfoodscookbook.com. You can get this. Uh, we have a special right now where you can get the hardcover and the digital copy uh as a package and cool. I, I recommended the digital copies amazing to travel with um it's what we have in our ipad in here for mm -hmm. all the recipes to scroll through for my staff yeah. and then i kind of keep this one like on a little pedestal in my kitchen it's, it's a beautiful book thank you. i'm gonna buy it yeah is it, we, so it's on that website perfect it is yeah, okay. living foods cookbook it's also on amazon but we have it uh it it's way cheaper and we have a deal for it because amazon boosts everything so we're we're always trying to get everyone to go to our website, the website. for okay. it because you can get the digital copy and the and the hardcover. Um, and there's over 200 images. At least 200 of my recipes are in there. And like I said, just the Urban Spice Guide alone to me is like been I, I myself have been learning referencing it mm -hmm. when I'm using herbs or my children are like, oh, this hurts or I have a tummy ache. And it's so neat to find like, oh, wow, I didn't know cumin had a place yeah. for that. Like yeah. I love cumin as a spice, but I didn't know it could help with digestion or fenugreek. I Wow, this is amazing to understand like new depths of fenugreek. And mm -hmm. so I've been going back through the Urban spice guide myself and just kind of reflecting on you know the value again of understanding that food is medicine it's not supposed to be something that you satiate your emotional roller coaster from that you're you're filling a void from or that you're just looking to fill up being empty it would be better that you actually fast build an appetite and eat something substantial at some point when you break that fast mm, um, I love that. Yeah. yeah so i would say um wow. 
closing closing reflections um loving each other is is much easier when you come into a loving space with yourself and one of the most powerful ways you can love yourself is to nourish yourself properly it's not a form of loving yourself to to eat off of taste and then your body has to deal with the lack of substance in mm -hmm. there because mind and body are two lovers so this lover puts this lover through all kinds of things that if it was up to this lover, it would not do. Mm -hmm. uh, even a hike, you know, for you, you're enjoying the breeze and the birds, oh, this is beautiful for the body. Nerves are firing, muscles are tearing, blood is pumping. It's it's a whole process for the physical body to provide mm -hmm. the human experience for the mind. Yeah. And so what we see a lot, especially with very immunologically compromised people or a lot of patients I see, is that the disconnect between mind and body has has caused a real rift in the marriage. Mm. And that's not a good thing with mind and body as we get older because this lover, the body, who has been telling the mind, hey, you need to deal with this. Hey, could you deal with this? Hey, we really need a detox. And the mind is just going from experience to experience in the five sense reality. It's not listening. So just like if you were in a relationship yeah. and you kept trying to talk to that person and they weren't listening, yeah. you'd be like, all right, you know what? I'm not even trying to tell you any of this anymore. I'm not going to try to even communicate. Wow. And so what happens is there becomes, this is where surprises come up. This is where, oh, I got diagnosed with this cancer, you know, this mm -hmm. cancer growth. Mm -hmm. It's like cancer grows in you for 10 years before it's detectable. No way. Wow. So, but remember this lover, the body doesn't communicate linguistically. It doesn't communicate. It communicates through sensation. Really? Yeah. So if you have inflammation, that's your body saying, deal with this area. You know, this is hurting with the body doesn't want you to be in pain. It's it's its way of communicating. Wow. And so we're not taught from the mental perspective because we're so mental minded how to feel the body. So we get very disconnected from feeling. So true. So we miss a lot of messages that this thing is sending us. We do, us. yeah. So, and how can we listen to our heart more even, you know? Yeah, or our body yeah, is our learning body. to be in our breath. Our breath mm -hmm. and in our parasympathetic nervous system, which is tough because so much we're driven in the sympathetic, which is fight or flight. Mm. And that's the other thing is when you're in fight or flight, your body misses a lot of the higher functioning things that it needs to be doing, processing that bile processing more enzymes from the pancreas it's overlooking it because if you were running away from a bear your body mm -hmm. wouldn't be focused on digesting your food yeah. your body would be directing your energy to your arms and legs to run away from that bear exactly so we're not running away from a bear but we're in the same psychology in this world of go 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 fight or flight yeah so it's very hard for us to flip into that parasympathetic nervous system which is where the listening comes in yeah where the mind can listen to the body but one okay. of the best ways is laying on your back being present with your breath and actually talking to your body and saying i'm listening if this lover has been ignoring this lover and we're in a relationship yeah what, wouldn't you say one of the most successful things or helpful things in a relationship where one is ignoring the other is to stop and say i'm sorry were you saying something to me yeah like i'm listening now yeah. What do you have to share with me? Yeah. And so we have to do that with this body. We have to get out of that mental mind, get in a quiet place and listen more. And that's that's tough. I that love takes that. Effort. It does. It takes a little time. But just like if we wanted to show someone we cared about them, making a special allotment for of time mm -hmm. to sit down with them yeah. and be silent or just listen and be present is what would mean the most to that person true so just the same our body has been there for us it's giving us our experiences going 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 all the time and the mind is going 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 and the five sense reality it takes very little time for the body mm -hmm. which is providing all these experiences for us so that's my big advice is healing that mind body connection I it's love important. that. And it's individual. It's subjective to each it one of us. It is subjective. Yeah. Well, this has been amazing. I think you're incredible. And just one Thank last you. thing, a little bit off topic from that, but I was thinking I'm raw vegan, a lot of raw vegans on the channel and you're a chef. Mm. Any quick idea for a dressing that we could whip up in our blender for a salad? Something simple mm. and easy that we could whip up. A hundred percent. Um, one of my favorite dressings that we do right now, and this is a big one if you're if you're very anti-soy, like the, the soy we use is gluten-free, so we use tamari. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of people are anti-soy. One of my secrets is umi plum vinegar. Okay. So if you guys aren't familiar with it, mm -hmm. it's salty, 
there's no soy in it. Yeah. It's kind of, it's like a pinkish purple in color. Wow. It's fairly affordable. It's usually about four or five bucks okay. for a bottle of it. And so because I've gotten off the oils, I keep the oils really out of my dressings. So I'll use an Umi Plum Vinegar <clears throat> and I'll take like a sun-dried tomato yeah. and some lemon. And depending if you use garlic or not, mm -hmm. blending that with a little water. So if you use Umi Plum Vinegar, you can add water to it and it will dilute it out. Hmm. Okay. And so water, lemon juice, a little sun-dried tomato and your favorite herbs, blending it up is an amazing, that like, sounds great. amazing herbal dressing. Okay, yeah. amazing. Thank you. Yeah, and where can everybody find you? And I'll link the book and everything everything below. Uh, you can find um, our Living Foods company at Mandala Living Foods. Uh, the cookbook you can get at livingfoodscookbook.com. And then if anyone's curious about the neuromuscular work I touch base on, um, the company that supports neuromuscular release therapy is called Matrix Body Mechanics. Mechanics. You can check that out at matrixbodymechanics.com. And um, there is one more link I'm thinking of mm -hmm. besides Mandala Living Foods. Oh, there's a film about this work, about the power of the inner physician and inner mm -hmm. healing. And uh, two films, actually, that are now becoming a docuseries that came out in 2022 and went viral to 60 countries. So I'm always trying to get more people to check it out. Releasethemovie.com. The film's called Release the Movie, and you can go see it on releasethemovie.com. We released it free to the world there. Cool. So, yeah. Wow. Well, this yeah. has been amazing. Thanks, Chef Micah. Thank I've enjoyed you. this chat a lot. I've learned a lot. Thank you for taking the time to come check us out. Yeah, no. Bring more awareness to what we're doing. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. I love it. And thank you guys, the viewers, for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more awesome videos just like this one, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Aloha. Aloha.